Amen. Greetings, 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 Mary. Welcome. Again, we are just holding on just for a second while we kind of listen to The Lion and the Lamb by Big Daddy Weed. We have no rights to this music, but we're using this music as we come on in and prepare for our Bible study. Yeah. Welcome to his ministry, Hearts in Submission. Yes. And as you can see, we are covering tonight, we are actually on a new series. And that is Acts of the Apostles. Acts of the Apostles. Bible study series. Again, welcome to his ministry, Hearts in Submission. Listen, we are so excited for you to be with us tonight. Uh, whether you are with us live and you're tracking with us during our Bible studies on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, or you are going back and listening to the replay because someone shared it with you or it came across your news feed, we are excited to have you here. We're not going to delay. We're going to go ahead and delve right in to our Bible study tonight. Again, welcome to his ministry, Hearts and Submission. And for those of you Marys who sit at the feet of Jesus with us, welcome Marys. And even if you are a gentleman, you sit at the feet of Jesus with us. Yes, come on in and join us in this Bible study series on the Acts of the Apostles. Tonight, we're going to cover the introduction. But before we do that, let's go ahead and pray, right? Make sure you have your word. That's a prerequisite. This is a Bible study. So make sure that you have your word so you can track with us, have your notepad, your pen, your devices, whatever it is that you use to do what you need to do to track with us. Yes, in the word of God. So let's exhale this day. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for this day. Thank you, Master, for all that you have done in and through our lives. As we sit at your feet, you've given us another opportunity to learn more about what it is that you have called us to do as we observe and as we glean from the old generals, from those that have gone before us like the apostles in Acts. And of course, primarily our sovereign King Jesus who left this amazing blueprint for us. And then when he transcended into heaven, sent his spirit. He said, I'm going and I am going to ask my father to send one who will be able to help you do everything that I have taught you to do, to revolutionize, to reconcile souls to the kingdom of God, to advance his kingdom. And that is his spirit, Holy Spirit, the third person of the Godhead. You heard me say person of the Godhead. And it's so beautiful because the acts is where you really see the manifestation of the power of the Holy Spirit. Though he is aiding and doing everything throughout the entire word. He was the one hovering over the deep, even before there was shape and form. It, it was just void, and it was Holy Spirit, the third person in the Trinity. So the Acts really, really speak to what Jesus did in and through, how he taught, Jesus taught the apostles, and his Spirit, the Holy Spirit, did in and through them to enable them to do the acts, right? All right, so let's move on, Mary's. But we're going to pray for us as we finish up this prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we're just excited. I'm moving in. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. We thank you for every Mary and for every individual God that will hear this Bible study tonight. I'm just so excited. And this is actually how I talk to the Lord. So this is my prayer. So, Father, thank you for covering. Uh, the Marys, their hearts, their minds, and every individual that they will receive from you, what you desire for them to receive in this Bible study series, 
the Acts of the Apostles. We give you glory, honor, and praise for it. In Jesus' name, Yahshua Hamashiach's name, we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Yes. And you still have time, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, to invite someone. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Now, let's move on. I'm going to go ahead and delve in. Now, with this particular uh, series, we want to make sure that you know exactly where we are citing our references, where we are getting our material in addition to the word of God, right? So this particular Bible study series, the bulk of our information actually is going to come from uh, True Jesus Church. And you can see here on the screen where we have the works cited, True Jesus Church, bsg.tcj.org as well. I am using tonight the Life in the Spirit Bible, Bible. okay? So there is, it's a study guide. It's also a study Bible. So Life in the Spirit Study Bible is what I will be using. So I will be gleaning from that. So you'll see information there. You'll hear information that comes from these sources. And when we uh, before we close out, of course, you know that we will never close out without giving you an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ into your heart as Lord and Savior or rededicate your life. And that plan of salvation and prayer will come from Warrior Chronicles born into battle. Okay, so Acts Bible study guides from True Jesus Church. All right, so we got that in there. Want to make sure that we do that right. Now let's talk a little bit about the introduction, the introduction to Acts, right, Marys? All right, Acts is what? It is the 43rd book in the Bible, and it is the fifth book in the New Testament. Fact checkers, yeah. It's the 43rd book in the Bible and the fifth book in the New Testament. Acts is traditionally known as the Acts of the Apostle, right? Traditionally known as the Acts of the Apostle, with Apostles, which speaks to the works, the gospel of our risen King Jesus Christ that he carried out through the apostles, his disciples, his advent followers, advent followers of Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Therefore, right? the book of Acts could equally be titled the Acts of Jesus Christ and Holy Spirit. And as we walk through this series with Holy Spirit, our governor, you will see why it could equally be titled the Acts of Jesus Christ and Holy Spirit. We are in the dispensation of Holy Spirit. We've been there for a very long time, right? But People don't always know and understand where we are. It's so important for us to be able to discern and, and know where we are, what seasons we're in, what dispensation we're in. And we're in the dispensation really of Holy Spirit. And he is still performing, performing miracles through his people, through the Godhead's people. He is a part of that Trinity. He was sent to do just that. And that's exactly why there is still light in this earth. But I'm going to stay on point, but I think I, I just needed to share that with you so that you understand that even as we are teaching and we are, you know, we're not just pulling things out of the hat to minister about and to teach about. These are messages in essence, studies in essence, that Holy Spirit, our governor, is impressing in our hearts this important for the season, all right? Acts further highlights the ministry of Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, his grooming his disciples, teaching them to evangelize the world. And on whatever platform that we are on, Mary's brothers and sisters in Christ, that's what we should be doing. And if you have been tracking with us from the beginning or midpoint or wherever you came in, you know that in the beginning, we covered several books by Joyce Meyer, and they dealt with uh, uh, healing, deliverance, dealing with overcoming 
you know, strongholds and, and demonic infiltration and all of that, the battlefield of the mind and healing uh, the soul of the woman, both of those books by Joyce Myers. We started out with those particular teachings and have moved in. And in the last series that we covered here was the full armor of God. So go back. That was the very last series that we covered before uh, this particular series that we're on now that was starting today on the Acts of the Apostles. So go back because everything works together. It's all working together to bring us to a place where the Lord wants us to be in these teachings so that we can apply it in our daily lives. Because the word is our basic instructions before leaving this earth is all applicable, right? Okay, so again, ask further highlights the ministry of Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, grooming his disciples, teaching them to evangelize the world, reconciliation of souls to the kingdom of Elohim God, and the manifest power of Holy Spirit, of his spirit, the outpouring of his spirit. You see that so prevalent, so bold in the Acts, the book of Acts the outpouring of Holy Spirit through the apostles of Jesus, which enabled them to act on Jesus's behalf and continue to carry the message, the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because when Jesus transcended into heaven, when he died on the cross, he came to do what he came to do. He did that while in his earthly ministry, he was teaching the disciples who then transferred that information and knowledge and converted souls, converted individuals, and also unified the Jews and the Gentiles so that we all could then be partakers in a part of the body. That's why we're sitting here today teaching this and able to teach this because that then carried over to us. And we are a part of the kingdom of God and we are now carrying the message, the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the best way to do that is then to replicate uh, disciples and train up individuals to equally carry this word after they receive Jesus Christ into their heart as Lord and Savior. And we have to know what the word of God says and how to do it because the word is our basic instructions before leaving this earth. Okay, so that's exactly what was happening in Acts before Jesus actually transcended and then Holy Spirit came, you know, and he rested and he abided in and he began to teach the disciples and they then further were used to continue the advancement of the kingdom of God in the earth. Yes. All right. Now, Miracles of the apostles, because we're talking about the acts, we're talking about Holy Spirit then endowing them with power to do what Jesus Christ wanted them to do and wanted them to continue when he transcended into heaven and now sitting at the right hand of God the acts, miracles of the apostles. So these are some of the things that we will touch and we will cover as we walk through the acts. And that's why then you would see that it would be called the acts of the apostles because of the miracles of the apostles and all that they did to advance the kingdom of God, you know, healing and deliverance and all of these different things, ministering the gospel, signs and wonders that followed them, right? So miracles of the apostles, uh, here's an example here. The lame man cured, cured by Peter, and that's in Acts 3, 6 through 9. The death of Ananias and Sapphira, that's in Acts 5, 1 through 10. Saul's sight restored, who in the beginning, his name was uh, Saul when he was persecuting the Christians, mighty apostle, okay? Then he became Paul, right? 
Saul's sight restored in Acts 9, 17 through 18, uh, healing of Ananias, uh, Acts 9, 33, 33 through 35, and make sure you're writing down these scriptures, but equally, they're here on the screen for you, so you can go back and replay, but I won't be long-winded, Marys. I'm going to keep it moving. Y'all know I can, I get in there, and it gets really, really good, but I want to make sure that you get everything that you need to get, so you will have the bandwidth to hang in there with us, and we replay, so let me keep moving. Raising of Dor Dorcas, okay? Raising of Dorcas, Acts 9, 36 through 41, okay? Elmas blinded, Emmaus, Elmas blinded, Acts 13, 8 through 11, lame man cured by Paul, okay? Acts 14, 8 through 10, demon cast out of a girl, Acts 16, 16 through 18, raising of uh, Ephricus. And I may be saying that not quite right. That is Acts 9, 9 through 10. Paul unharmed by the viper. Acts 28 through 35 and healing of Pubilus father. Acts 28, 7 through 9. All right. And some of these names, you know, notice in the Bible can be a bit difficult <laughs> to pronounce when your tongue gets a little tight. But it's all right. <laughs> and guess what? Here it is on the screen. You can fact check us. All right. Here we go, Mirrors. So the miracles of the apostles. So these are some of the things that we will touch as we walk through the acts of the apostles. And this is why you would, you know, it would traditionally be known as the acts of the apostles. However, um, equally, it could be titled the acts of Jesus and Holy Spirit. Okay. All right. Let's talk further here in this introduction. We're going to look at the author, the date, the background, the purpose, special features, nine major emphasis that characterize the acts, three unique characteristics, the hermeneutical principle, and central verse. So let's do that, Marys. This is, remember, this is our introduction, and we will then get into this more, right? Once we get further into the teaching, but we wanted to just kind of talk to you a bit about uh, the background because it's so important for you to really understand this introduction about these different aspects and components of the book. It's important, okay? The author, the prologue to Acts reveals that this work is the second part of the two volume work addressed to the same person. The first part of which is the gospel according to Luke. There is a distinct unity in style and language between these two books. All the evidence points to Luke to the Gentile physician, a close companion of Paul as the writer. And what that speaks to uh, Mary's brothers and sisters in Christ, that they, it really looked like a book that was anonymous, but everything pointed back to Luke, right? And equally what stood out is that it was addressed to the same person and that was Theophilus. Theophilus in the first volume, which is Luke, in the book of Luke, and then this second volume that this same author, and the first author we know definitively is Luke, and then the second volume, which points to Luke being the author, right? Because it was equally written to Theophilus, all right? Now, the date, let's talk about the date. Acts was completed after the end of Paul's two-year imprisonment in Rome, and that was after the death of Jesus, 61 
through 63, because Luke ended his account with Paul awaiting trial in Rome. The fact that Acts makes no mention of Nero's persecution of Christians beginning in beginning after death, after Jesus' death, AD 65, and the fall of Jerusalem after death, AD 70, suggests that Acts was completed before these events. So there were certain series of events that determines really when this book was actually written, okay? Therefore, AD 64, AD being after Christ's death, is a reasonable date for the composition of Acts. Yeah, it's good, right? Now, let's take a look at the background and the purpose. And I am going between material in my Bible and what we gleaned and what we're using in the actual study guide for uh, True uh, Jesus Church. But in my Bible, in the study Bible, let's just take a look at the background, just a little bit of the background. The book of Acts, like the Gospel of Luke, speaks further to qualifying that Luke was the writer of this particular book. The book of Acts, like the Gospel of Luke, is addressed to a man named Theophilus, and that's in Acts 1 and 1. Although the author is not identified by name in either the book, the Aunt, the anonymous, the unanonymous testimony of early Christianity and the uh, co collaborating internal evidence of the two books point to the common author Luke. Okay, the great Dr. Luke, and there's further scriptural reference there in Colossians four and fourteen. The Holy Spirit prompted Luke to write to Theophilus in order to fill a need in the Gentile church for a full account of the beginnings of Christianity, okay? So that's just kind of a snippet of what that looks like in the background, okay? Acts selectively covers the first 33 years of the church's history. As a church historian, Luke traces the spread of the gospel from Jerusalem to Rome, mentioning no fewer than 32 countries, 54 cities, nine Mediterranean islands, 95 different persons by name, and a variety of governmental officials and administrators by their precise titles, okay? So this is huge. All right, now let's take a look at the purpose. All right, the purpose then speaks to Luke has at least two purposes in reaccounting the church's beginning. And as we are moving forward and we're talking more about Luke because we, we resolve, we have a resolve that Luke is actually the writer of Acts, right? Believed writer of Acts. So we're speaking more to what the great physician Luke wrote about and how he then described the accounts in the book of Acts. So purpose, Luke has at least two purposes in reaccounting the church's beginnings, okay? He shows that the gospel moved triumphantly from the narrow borders of Judea, Judea, Judaism into the Gentile world in spite of opposition and persecution. That was one. And then two, he reveals the role of Holy Spirit in the church's life and mission, emphasizing the baptism in Holy Spirit as God's provision for empowering the church to proclaim the gospel and to continue Jesus's ministry. Huge highlight, italicize that. Why is it so important for us to know this? Because we are to do the same thing. We are to be evangelizing. We are to be continuing 
the ministry of Jesus Christ, right? Of Yahshua, Hamashiach, Jesus, the true Jesus, Jesus Christ. All right. So two, he reveals the role of Holy Spirit in the church's life and mission, emphasizing the baptism in the Holy Spirit and Holy Spirit is God's provision for empowering the church to proclaim the gospel and to continue Jesus's ministry. Luke explicitly records three times that the, that the baptism in the spirit was accompanied by speaking in our heavenly language. Our native language, what is that? Speaking in tongues, okay? And that is in Acts 2 and 4, Acts 10 and 45 through 46, 19, 1 through 7, the context of these passages, that's X, brothers and sisters in Christ Mary's. The context of these passages indicates that this was uh, normative in early Christianity and is God's, Elohim God's, enduring pattern for the church. Yeah. Now, let's look at special features there, okay? Let's look at some special features. You know, I did want to touch something there. No, let me just keep moving. Let me keep moving. We'll get into it. We have a whole series. Now let's just look at some special features there. Special features, nine major emphasis that characterize acts. Okay, nine major emphasis that characterize acts. Okay, and that is number one the church, Acts reveals the church's source of power and the true nature of its mission, along with principles that should govern the church in every generation, in every generation. No generation is exempt. Number two, the Holy Spirit, okay? So number one was the church. Number two is Holy Spirit nine major emphasis that characterize acts. So number two, Holy Spirit, okay? The third person of the Trinity is mentioned specifically 50 times the baptism and ministry of the Spirit imparts power reference Acts 1 and 8. Prophecy reference Acts 2, 17 through 18. Boldness reference Acts 4, 31. Holy fear of God, reference Acts 5, third verse, fifth verse, and 11th verse. Okay, the fifth chapter, third verse, fifth verse, 11th verse. Wisdom, Acts 6, 3 through 10, 3 and 10, rather. Guidance, Acts 16, 6 through 10, and spiritual gifts, Acts 19 and six. And then number three, okay? Nine major emphasis that characterize is Acts, okay? Three, early church messages. Early church messages. Luke skillfully recounts inspired sermons by Peter, Stephen, Paul, James, and others, providing insight into the early church not found elsewhere in the New Testament. Number four, prayer. Prayer. The early Christians devoted themselves to regular and fervent prayer, sometimes lasting all night and producing great results. Number five, signs and wonders and miracles. These manifestations accompanied the, pro the proclamation of the gospel in the power of Holy Spirit. Number six, persecution. Proclaiming the gospel with power, consistently staring up religious and or secular opposition and persecution. Number seven, Jews slash Gentiles. Sequence. Throughout Acts, the gospel goes first to the Jews and then to the Gentiles. So that order, okay? Eight, women, 
special mention is made of women involved. Mares, listen to that. Highlight that. Women, number eight, women. Special mention is made of women involved in the ongoing work of the church. So I'll pause there, Mary's, and allow you to process that, right? Yeah. Brothers, you too, listen. But I just wanted to pause there for the Mary's, yeah. Okay, so again, number eight, women. Special mention is made of women involved in the ongoing work of the church. Number nine, triumph. Come on now, triumph, no barriers national, religious, cultural, or racial, no barriers, triumph, okay? No barriers, national, religious, cultural, or racial, and no opposition or persecution could thwart the advancement of the gospel as it was proclaimed by the enabling power of Holy Spirit. And at times with great signs and extraordinary miracles, right? Okay, so again, I reemphasize, this could equally be named the acts of Jesus and Holy Spirit, yeah. Now, let's talk about the three unique characteristics of Acts. Toggling, Mary's, between my devices and my material here. Let's look at the three unique characteristics. First, Acts is the only book in the New Testament recording the history of the church. Without Acts, the link between the Gospels and Epistles would be lost. Number two, Acts is a pivotal book of transitions from Judaism to Christianity, from the law to the Gospel, from the Jews to the Gentiles, from a small group of believers to the universal church. No barriers, no religious protocol as it relates to separation of denominations, but one body, no Jews, no Gentiles. We're all engrafted into the body of Christ. We are the, the children of, we are followers, advent followers of Jesus Christ. That's where it began. That's what Christianity looks like. It doesn't look like a denomination. All right, number three. And again, and I kind of emphasized this earlier, uh, Acts records, but this is number three of the unique characteristics, which was also kind of touched on in the nine major emphasis that characterizes Acts. Number three, Acts records many sermons and speeches including those of aforementioned Peter, Simon, and Paul, etc. Okay. All right. Now let's look at the hermeneutical principles of that. Let's take a look at that. Now the hermeneutical principles of it or principle is some interpreters, some interpreters view the book of Acts as if it were under another dispensation that is no longer current. That's a trick of the enemy. We're in the dispensation of this Acts. And the reason why they probably feel that because they don't see the signs, wonder, they don't see the manifestation of Holy Spirit and miracles in their life because they lean and depend on natural science and on man and not on God and not on Elohim's spirit, not on Yahshua HaMashiach's spirit, not on Holy Spirit. 
And that is a place where we need that we need to practice, we need to exercise, we need to stretch out in that place to be able to carry out God's purposes and plans, to do all that he has called us to do, to be able to sit here and speak boldly before you and minister and teach this gospel that you may be able to go out and that you are equipped to go out and then further teach this to your children, teach this to those that you have been called to through the unadulterated word of God with the uh, empowerment, with the uh, uh, manifestation and power of Holy Spirit teaching and bringing supernatural and divine revelation to this living word, this living and breathing oracle, this document, this basic, this precepts, this, uh, our, our constitution, our basic instructions before leaving this earth, this supernaturally God inspired, supernaturally divinely downloaded to those who pinned this to paper, right? All right. Some interpreters view the book of Acts as if it were under another dispensation that is no longer current. Instead of seeing it as God's standard, our code of conduct, our constitution, our precepts, our basic instructions before leaving this earth. Instead of seeing it as God's standard for the church, we are the church, we're the body of Christ, we're the church. So again, Instead of seeing it as God's standard for the church and its witness during the entire period of time, the New Testament calls the last days. Reference Acts 2.17. Acts is not just a history book of the early church. It is a handbook for the Christian life and for a spirit-filled church. Believers are to desire and expect as the norm for today's church, all elements in the New Testament. Church's ministry and experience, okay? All elements should be expected. These are the, the expectations we should expect there to be a move of Holy Spirit and all that we do as the body of Christ, as one body in Christ Jesus, all joint supply as a part of the body, right? Individually and collectively, that we should expect an infilling of the Holy Spirit and we should see, be able to see the manifestation and the move of God now, but we have to believe. Believers, there we go, ought to desire, expect as the norm for today's churches. Our elements in the New Testament church ministry and experience. All right. Expect the writing of the New Testament to correlate and align with everything in the old. It is a continuation and it's showing us as we evolve in this word exactly where we're supposed to be and we're in that dispensation, okay? And that does not mean that the Old Testament does not apply. It absolutely does, everything from Genesis to Revelations. But we're talking about the book of Acts right now and what it is that it offers the believer, how important it is to us, right? And it tells us more about the person of the Holy Spirit and how he worked through the apostles. These are the attain, these are attainable when the church moves in the full power of Holy Spirit. Miracle signs and wonders are attainable when the church moves in the full power of Holy Spirit. Nothing in Acts or in the New Testament indicates that signs, wonders, miracles, spiritual gifts are the apostolic standard for the church's life and ministry generally were to cease suddenly or permanently at the end of the apostolic age. 
Acts records what the church must be and do in any generation as it continues. Listen, let me just highlight that. Let me, let me just reemphasize that. Acts records what the church, that's us, Mary's, brothers and sisters in Christ. Acts records what the church must be and do in any generation right now as it continues Jesus's ministry in the Pentecostal power of Holy Spirit. How do I know that? <laughs> See Acts 7.44, all right? That's, that's going to be the hermeneutical principle. Now, let's look at the central verse, all right? And remember, I'm moving from device to device here. Let's look at the central verse of it. The central verse, but you shall, and this is Acts 1 and 8, but you shall receive power when Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And this particular lesson, I'm going to touch a bit with the lesson about witnessing. So that then speaks further to the acts of the apostles and what we are to do because we are endowed with the power of the Holy Spirit. When, when we receive him, when he comes up on us, when will he do that for us is when we receive Jesus Christ into our hearts as Lord and Savior. And that is why every time we minister, every time we teach, we never, we, we don't, we, we never neglect or set aside giving the plan of salvation, even if you don't need it. There, you feel like you don't, but there may be someone that does, and there may be someone that needs to rededicate their lives and reopen up their hearts to allow Holy Spirit to come in and take up residency within them so that they can carry out his purposes and plans, so that they can do exactly what he's called them to do because you believe, you have faith to believe. Okay, and he will endow you even with faith. He will uh, help you. He will cure your unbelief. Open up your heart to him. Faith is one of the keys to the kingdom. It's one of the fruit byproducts, fruit of the spirit that we are to yield in our life. Faith, okay? All right, so the central verse, but you shall receive power when Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And when it says to the end of the earth, that's in Acts 1 and 8. That means right where you are, wherever you are. And then you are to reproduce and then you are to carry the message of the gospel brothers and sisters in Christ, that is our overarching purpose. And the Acts tells us what that looks like and how we can then carry that out. We can't do it without Holy Spirit. As we walk through this Acts, we're walking through it and Holy Spirit is then saying, yes, this is what I need you to know. I will help you. I will bring revelation. I will bring light. I will, right where you are, exactly what you need, I will reveal it to you. I will teach you. I'm your teacher. I'm your confidant. I am your helper. I am your advocate. I am your counselor. I'm everything that you need to do all that Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, want us to continue to do here on earth as we continue his ministry in the earth. All right, Marys. Now, Moving on to the lesson, okay? So this is actually the first lesson we, we talked about, uh, the introduction. So you, you have an understanding of the book of Acts uh, concept, the summary of it, a synopsis of what it really looks like a bit. Now let's kind of talk about this lesson, the first lesson here. You shall be witnesses 
to me. You shall be witnesses to me. All right, in the survey of this, the book of Acts begins with the resurrected Jesus Christ instructing his apostles to wait for the promised Holy Spirit. It's the beginning of it, survey of it. The book of Acts begins with the resurrected Jesus Christ, Yahshua HaMashiach, instructing his apostles to wait for the promised Holy Spirit who would empower them to preach the gospel, who would empower them to act on Jesus's behalf. The Lord then told them that they would be his witnesses starting from Jerusalem and progressing to all Judea and Samaria, and finally to the end of the world. After this, Jesus ascended, Yahshua ascended to heaven. As prophesied by Jesus, the apostles did receive the promised Holy Spirit, the promised Holy Spirit a few days later, and they were immediately filled with power and began testifying for the Lord. The work of spreading the gospel developed exactly according to what Jesus had said. It developed exactly according to what Jesus had said. Now, I have something further to touch on with that survey as we move into the witnessing aspect of that. And this is what we'll actually be covering throughout. So we're going to see the movement and we're going to walk with them. And you imagine yourself there in that, in that season and you walking with them and you are uh, watching and observing and you're a part of this. Yes, this is what we're doing. So engage, Mary as you're sitting at the feet of Jesus, because this is what we want to do. We want to watch them move. We want to watch how they do this and how Holy Spirit uses them and how he endows them so that we know that we are connected to our amazing Holy Spirit, that we are connected to our sovereign King who sent his spirit to teach us that he would not leave us as orphans. Okay. We don't have an orphan spirit. We have been engrafted in. And if you feel that you do and you're not connected and you don't understand and you're not receiving, stay around so that you can then receive by faith through the plan of salvation and prayer. And we'll get to that. But let me just speak a little bit more, just touch a little bit more on some things in the survey. Okay. Whereas... Luke's gospel records all that Jesus began to do and teach. This is as well a part of the survey of Acts and that's in Acts 1 and 1. Acts describes what Jesus continued to do and teach after his ascension by who? The power of Holy Spirit working in and through his disciples and the early church. When Jesus ascended into heaven, Acts 1, 9 through 11, his last instruction, which we spoke to right here, his last instruction to his disciples was to wait in Jerusalem until they were baptized in Holy Spirit. And that is Acts 1, 4 through 5. And the key verse, uh, and we spoke to that in the central verse, Acts 1 and 8, contains the theological and geographical capsule summary of the book. Jesus' promise to the disciples, they will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon him. Power to be witnesses, right? Witnesses. All right, now let's just move on. And I do, do want to say this, Acts contains an intermingling of divine and human action. So Mary's, this is not just a story in the book. The book is real, it is alive, it is living, it is breathing. It is God. This, this is the word of God. And it is our basic instructions before leaving this earth. And it is living, breathing, alive and active in our life. 
X contains an intermingling of divine and human action. The entire church, not just apostles, listen, the entire church, not just the apostles, preached the word everywhere they went, everywhere they went. That then, Mary's, does that exempt us? No, that includes us that we are to do likewise in Acts 8 and 4. Deacons like Stephen and Philip in Acts 6, 1 through 6 became mighty in the Holy Spirit and faith, performing great wonders and miraculous signs, Acts 6 and 8, and even shaking entire cities with the gospel, Acts 8, 5, through 13, godly men prayed fervently, saw angels, had visions, witnessed mighty signs and wonders, drove out demons, healed the sick, and proclaimed the gospel with great boldness and authority in spite of problems within the church. Does that sound familiar? Yeah, okay. All right, in spite of problems within the church, such as the Jewish Gentile tension, look at chapter 15, and in spite of persistent persecution from outside, the church by religious and civil authorities, okay? So in spite of persecution, persistent persecution from outside the church by religious and civil authorities, the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified in the word and deed, in word and deed from one city to the next, okay? Important, important. All right, now I'm just going to move on to the witnessing in Jerusalem so that you see how important it is because the epicenter for witnessing was Jerusalem. The epicenter for witnessing was Jerusalem, okay? Witnessing in Jerusalem, and here it is. You would look at in reference verses uh, Acts 1, 1, 8 through 4. And let's just take a look at that, okay? With that witnessing in Jerusalem in Acts 1, 1, 8 through 4, after believers receive Holy Spirit, Peter stood up with the other apostles and preached a powerful sermon to all the Jews and devout men who were present and converted 3,000 that day. As a, res as a result, the church in Jerusalem was established. Look at Acts 2, 1 through 40, 47. I'm going to stop there. Next, witnessing in Judea and Samaria. Look at Acts 8, 5, 12 through 25. From chapter 8 onwards, Philip went to Samaria and successfully proclaimed the news, the good news, the message of the gospel to a people despised by the Jews. Peter and John went there and helped the believers receive Holy Spirit. Look at Acts 8, 5 through 25, okay? This fulfilled the second part of Jesus' prophecy. The Lord also sent Philip to preach to the, the uh, Ethiopian Enoch, as well as all the cities in Samaria. Look at and reference Acts 8, 26 through 40. While the church was undergoing severe tribulation, the Lord Jesus transformed Saul, a violent leading persecutor of the church into a believer and prepared him for the church's missionary endeavors ahead. Paul and also now named Saul the Apostle, uh, Paul became an apostle and the Lord's instrument in carrying the gospel to the Gentiles. Reference Acts 1 through 31. 
Meanwhile, the church continued to thrive throughout Judea, uh, Galilee, and Samaria. All right. Now, let's move on to witnessing to the end of the earth. Reference Acts 13 through 28. Beginning with chapter 13, Antioch in Syria became Luke's focus instead of Jerusalem. All three of Paul's missionary journeys originated from that city. The first missionary journey concentrates on the Galatian cities of Pisidania, Antioch, Iconium, Lyseria, and Derby. Acts 13, 1, 14 through 28. Because some men from Judea, from Judea, had come down to teach the Gentile believers the necessities of circumcis circumcision. Paul and Barnabas engaged in a sharp controversy with them. Okay, and so I'm just gonna stop there and move on. So this is just giving you some highlights of where they were witnesses. And these are things that we're going to touch as we walk through the acts of the apostles. And you can see equally why traditionally it is named or called the Acts of the Apostles, right? However, I stick to uh, the name that I would, you know, think is good, that it would have been named equally uh, the Acts of Jesus and Holy Spirit, okay? But you do see the Acts of the Apostles throughout in witnessing in Jerusalem. And that is Mary's brothers and sisters in Christ, that's our overarching purpose in the earth. It's our overarching purpose. That's what we are to do. I'm excited about that. Now, the themes. Let's just talk about the themes. Themes, the power and the work of Holy Spirit, the themes of this book in Acts. The power and the work of Holy Spirit, the growth of the church, and of course, which we highlighted, witnessing. That's the themes of this book. From the onset, looking at the power and the work of Holy Spirit. From the onset of Acts, the Lord told his apostles that they would receive power to preach the gospel when Holy Spirit came upon him, when he, they would come upon him and he did, he came upon them in Acts 1, 8 through 9. Indeed, after receiving Holy Spirit, the disciples were trans, transformed totally. And if you have Holy Spirit living on the inside of you, if you look back from where you started, you should see a transformation. There should be some signs that Holy Spirit live on the inside of you. And there are some works that you have been called to do. There are some burdens. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. But you should have a yoke and a burden to carry out the gospel of Jesus Christ to fulfill the purposes and plans of our sovereign king in the earth. You really should. There should be trans there's transformation power in having Holy Spirit, in having the, the Holy Trinity, you know, in your life and living and residing within you. Yes. All right. Indeed, after receiving Holy Spirit, the disciples were transformed totally. Whereas, where? In areas that they were weak. Timid and had a poor understanding of God's word and will. Now, with the power of Holy Spirit, they had extraordinary courage to preach to the masses. Yeah. Holy Spirit also enabled them to preach effectively by giving them eloquence and by inspiring the listeners, as can be seen by Peter's conversion by Peter's conversion of the 3,000 on the day of Pentecost in Acts 2, 1 through 41. Not only that, they also received power to perform great miracles of healing and exorcism, as well as other signs and wonders. They had a clear, and, and I would say deliverances, right? Deliverances. 
as well as other signs and wonders. They had a clear goal and vision that they did not have before. Clear goal and vision that they didn't have before and Holy Spirit guided them every step of the way through direct revelation or visions. Throughout the whole narrative, the power and work of Holy Spirit were evident and is evident now, Marys, is evident now. And if you feel as if it is not in your life that Holy Spirit's uh, presence in your life, if you feel that you're not yielding the byproducts of his spirit and you're unable to do what he's called you to do, then ask him to come into your heart and take up residency within you to empower you and endow you with what you need to fulfill his purposes and plans in the earth, the purposes and plans of the Godhead. And here's the deal, Mary's brothers and sisters in Christ, assess yourself. Are you meeting, fulfilling the purposes and plans that you've been called to fulfill in the earth by God, by the Godhead, by Elohim God? Or are you doing what you want to do? Hmm. Okay. Now let's move on. The growth of the church, growth of the church, the body of Christ, not brick and mortar, the body of Christ as a whole. The church grew from a small group of 120 believers in Jerusalem to a widespread and mighty church, extending her boundaries to the whole of Palestine and eventually to Gentile territories. Acts goes into detail of what the church in the apostolic times did to create this remarkable growth. For instance, the growth of the church in Jerusalem was attributed to the disciples, focused on teaching of the apostles, fellowship, prayers, and practice of love. That's a fruit of the spirit, Mary's. Acts 2, 40 through 47, the church in Antioch grew because they had the services of a good worker, Barnabas. Where do you fit? Where are you in the body of Christ? What is it that you have been called to do in the fivefold ministry? The church in Antioch grew because they had the services of a good worker, Barnabas, who was full of Holy Spirit and faith, Acts 11, 23 through, through 24. By studying the passages that describes the church and its growth, we are able to learn many individual lessons by studying the passages that, are just, that describe the church and its growth enables us to learn many valuable lessons. So as I am giving these scriptural references, breaking this down and giving you a point of reference, go back Mary's in your own personal time and reference and study these scriptures because there's so much more that Holy Spirit wants to one-on-one -on -one with you reveal to you, okay? And reveal to us brothers and sisters in Christ, Mary's. Now let's talk about witnessing. And as we walk through these Bible studies, we're going to still, again, come back and touch it. This is just the introduction. And this talks about the, the, the precepts, the, the, the summary, the synopsis of what we are to be doing and what this, what Acts speaks to that we shall be witnesses for Yahshua HaMashiach, for Jesus Christ. Okay. Now, witnessing. Just another, just further, a little bit of a highlight there, just speaking to that a little bit more, okay? Witnessing. If there is one theme that could sum up the whole of Acts, it would be witnessing. If there is one theme that could sum up out of the three, it's three here. If there is one thing that could sum up the whole book of Acts, it would be witnessing. Acts started off by describing the origin of the commissioning of evangelism 
its overall plan according to Acts 1, 1 through 8, and the initial group of people chosen by God, by Elohim God, to undertake this task. We have all been chosen for a purpose. The word of God in Jeremiah 29 and 11, he knows the plans that he has for us, plans to prosper us, not to harm us, but to give us hope in a future. And in those plans, they encompass what we have been called to do. And if you're saying, okay, I still don't understand that, it is witnessing. And whatever platform that you have been called to, it will encompass. There will be an element of that that will uh, cause you to minister this gospel in a way that reconciles souls to the kingdom of God or back to his kingdom. Yeah, overarching purpose. So settle that, make that resolve in your heart. We are all to we are all called to evangelism. And I heard someone say, well, you know, the office of evangelism is really not that prevalent. Well, if we're all called to do it, listen, if we're all called to do it, and when we receive Jesus Christ into our heart as our Lord and Savior, and that is our overarching purpose, that is what he called us to do, everyone. I don't care what your office is, should speak to evangelism, should speak to converting souls back to the kingdom of God. I would say that evangelism is pretty major. It's a pretty major office that we all should actually be in. Whether you feel as if you have been in whether you have been, said that way, installed in that office or you have received your marching orders through salvation, you've been called to evangelize. So I come to let you all know that this evening and I'm excited about that. This is Evangelist Keisha talking. <laughs> yes. All right. Now, you know, I could stay there, but I won't stay there for too long. Listen. Acts started out by describing the origin of the commission of evangelism, its overall plan in Acts 1, 1 through 8, and the initial group of people chosen by God to undertake this task. It then uh, narrates how they received the power to witness for the Lord and their efforts from Jerusalem to Gentile, to the Gentile lands. Acts also goes into the message of their witnessing, repentance, and belief in Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, who is the only Savior, the truth, the light, the only way, Jesus Christ, who is the only sovereign King, our only Savior, and who had resurrected from the dead, baptism into Christ for the remission of sins and receiving the promised Holy Spirit. The strategies the apostles employed in their witnessing were also evident. For example, Paul always approached the Jews in the synagogue first, usually on the Sabbath day. Then he would reach out to the Gentiles, reference Acts 13 and 5, Acts 14, uh, Acts, and this is verses, okay? Acts 13, 5, 14, 42, Acts 14, the 14th chapter, verses 1, 2, 17, chapter 17, 1 through 3. Okay, and let me just say that again. Make sure it's not, I mix anything up. You got it. Acts chapter 13, verse 5, verse 14, verse 42. Acts chapter 14, verse 1, verse 2. Acts chapter 17, verse 1 through 3. All right, Marys. So this then gives you a synopsis of an introduction, a background. We've given you the survey. We've given you uh, uh, even a lesson on witnessing and where the survey of, of, of this book 
We've given you information about the author. So you are ready. We are ready, Mary, to delve deeper and to continue this walk into the Acts of the Apostles. So please join us. I know you wanted more. I know you did. <laughs> please, I wanted more. Please join us on next Tuesday. Okay, at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here, invite someone. And on next Tuesday, I'm Evangelist Keisha. Minister Sarah will unpack the next lesson coming on next week, okay? As we continue to walk through the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, and look, quote me, the Acts of Jesus and Holy Spirit. <laughs> Yes. Now, of course, as we stated, we will never, ever close out without giving you an opportunity to rededicate your life. Or if you haven't received Jesus Christ into your heart as Lord and Savior, it is so important that you do. It's so important that you do. Now, listen, from Warrior Chronicles, we are going to pray this plan of salvation, the kingdom warrior plan of salvation. And again, if you have not accepted Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, into your life as your personal Lord and Savior, the one who loves us so much that he gave his, his life to save our souls, the only one who can keep us from losing the battle and becoming spoils of war for the enemy of our souls and that's Satan. Yahshua HaMashiach Jesus Christ is the way, the truth and the life. No one can come to the Father. No one can come to Elohim God except through him. And you can reference John 14 and six. Open up your heart now, Mary's brothers and sisters in Christ and receive Yahshua HaMashiach Jesus Christ into your heart as your personal Lord and Savior. Receive him as your sovereign king. Or, that's if you're doing this for the very first time. Or, if you know the aforementioned that I've just made mention of and you want to rededicate your life, you've already accepted him as your so sovereign king, as Lord and Savior, but you would like to rededicate your life. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus. You desire a true heart metanoia, a new heart, a true heart conversion that can only be done by accepting Jesus and allowing Holy Spirit to come into your heart. In either situation, in both situations, listen, we're going to read a scripture to you and then we are going to pray the prayer of salvation and welcome you back into the kingdom of God or welcome you into the kingdom of God, okay? With that, it will then allow you to become, to become partakers in the kingdom of God, okay? Will allow you to become partakers in the kingdom of God, all right? Listen. With this guarantee, no matter how tough the battle, as a child of the most high God, in the end, we win. In the end, we win. Now, the scripture says this. This is what the scripture says. Romans 10, 8 through 11. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith, which we proclaim that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. Now pray this prayer brothers and sisters in Christ, 
Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach, I come before your throne of grace in a stance of surrender with a repentant heart. I confess my sins and I ask earnestly that you would forgive me and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. By confessing my sins and asking for forgiveness clears all legal ground that the enemy has against me. Yahshua Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I believe that you died on the cross of Calvary and on the third day you were raised from the dead. I believe that you transcended into heaven and now sitting at the right hand of Elohim God, making intercession for me. I believe that your blood paid for my sins, giving me the free gift of salvation and eternal life. I accept that free gift of salvation and eternal life. Thank you for granting me full access to the kingdom of Elohim God. Now I am seated in heavenly places with you, Yahshua Jesus, with you, Elohim God, for the rest of my life. In Yahshua Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen, and amen. All right, Marys. Thank you so much for hanging in there with us as we are walking through the book of Acts, the book of the, uh, the book of Acts, the uh, book, <laughs> the Acts of the Apostles, the Acts of the Apostles. And quote me, listen, I heard this and I then from a wise man and I grabbed a hold to it. Equally, the Acts of Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, and Elohim spirit, and Yahweh's spirit, Yahshua spirit, the acts of Jesus and Holy Spirit. Yes, Mary's brothers and sisters in Christ, we will see you on next week for the next lesson as we continue to walk through the book of Acts, the acts of the apostles, the acts of Jesus and Holy Spirit. All right? Love you. Hug success. Hug success. We'll see you on next Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right? Whatever that looks like in your time zone. And invite someone. All right? And go back, listen to the replays, share, share, share. All right? And if you would like to reach out to us, his ministry only at gmail.com if you need tools, if you need. Anything that you need, you have any burning desires, you want to get connected because you received Jesus Christ into your heart for the very first time as your Lord and Savior, you need to get connected to a Bible teaching church. Reach out to us, His Ministry Only at gmail.com. All right. We love you. We love you back. See you next Tuesday. All right, Mary's. <laughs>